So you read all over the internet about people and they run their car on water and hydrogen fuel cells and so on. You're running your car on hydrogen. You can't run a car on water. But you're using water. Right. You use water as the source material. You run electricity through it mm -hmm. and it breaks it down into hydrogen and oxygen and then you can burn the hydrogen. All right, so you found a way to store a lot more hydrogen in hydride. The equivalent of a full tank of gas. You want to fill up your car. How much hydride do you need? Well, I'll show you. No way. Yeah, that's the volume it takes to store enough hydrogen to propel this car close to 400 miles, just about what it gets running on a full tank of gas. Wow. And it's a lot safer than gasoline. Really? Yeah, these tanks can be shot at with incendiary bullets or cut in half with a chainsaw, and you could throw a match on them, they just smolder like a cigarette, and I can't say that about a gas tank. Here, only the hydrogen that you need is released from the tank. When the tank's heated, it produces hydrogen and the car burns it. So there's never much gaseous hydrogen in the system at any given time. So these are the these are the fuel lines? No, what are these? Those no, are these are the this provides power to the heater in the tank and also reads back the temperature of the tank. Why is that important? Well when you apply heat to hydride it releases hydrogen. So as oh. power is applied to here, it heats the hydride, right. and then the gas comes out, the big hoses on the end. Now you have four hoses, do they all mix into one big hose or yeah. something? Because you can only get hydrogen out of hydride at a certain rate with a certain temperature. And a single tank, you can't get it out at the volume you need. So you really just split it into four smaller units, heat them separately, and it works just fine. Okay. Um, this is what? This is a Hoffman apparatus. And it's used to? Produce hydrogen and oxygen from water. For fun, just because it's cool. Well, if you just have a use for hydrogen and oxygen or for demonstration purposes, it works just perfect. All you got to do is fill it with water. That's just regular water, right? Well, actually, water with a little citric acid, potassium hydroxide, anything like that. The more conductive you make the water, the faster hydrogen will come out. And each one of these sides is supposed to be hydrogen and oxygen? Right. One will be... Hydrogen will bubble up out of one, and oxygen uh -huh. will bubble up out of the other. Remember, water is H2O. Right. So when we break the bond of water apart, we'll get twice as much hydrogen gas as we do oxygen. So, we've just connected it there, right? and just by turning it on, you can see bubbles start pouring up out of there. It's 7-Up. <laughs> Kinda. So those bubbles are, well, they're not the same. So these are hydrogen bubbles and those are oxygen, oxygen bubbles. bubbles. Right. And there's, this is whiter, there's more of them. Right. I'll, you can see it's really... Why is there more? Oh, H2. Two. Two. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. There's twice as much. Hey, that actually makes sense. You can see. That what are I mean? What are these? You just have electrical current going to a, a it's piece a of piece foil. Of, well, it's a piece of platinum foil, and the reason you need platinum in there is because it's very corrosive to a metal for electrolysis to occur. But mm -hmm. platinum is highly resistant to corrosion. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a slow method, right? And you know, it it consumes a fair amount of electricity. Now, mm -hmm. if the electricity is being produced from solar panels or a mm -hmm. wind generator, it doesn't cost you anything, so who cares? But still, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours to refill mm -hmm. a vehicle. You want something that can produce hydrogen at a fairly quick rate. So, let's go ahead and extract some of this. Okay. Look at that. Wow. So there's power of hydrogen. You see, just from water, something exploded. So this is the same thing that was inside the lab. Yeah, that was a small tabletop model. This is a large industrial version, essentially, uh, which connects right to the water main. Right. So you can plumb it in like you connect your, you know, dishwasher. Or just connect to a garden hose. Right. And um, it's powered by 
uh, either uh, solar array, solar panels, mm -hmm. which convert sun into electricity, mm -hmm. or uh, a wind turbine takes the wind, converts it to electricity, or any other way. But the idea is just to use complete green energy. Ideally, I like to run this one on solar. New Mexico gets a lot of sunlight, so mm -hmm. that's really all there is to it. You connect it to a water line, plug it into your solar panel, and open the water line, you right. know, it starts producing hydrogen, and when it has a sufficient quantity uh -huh. in there, let the hydrogen out, and you just leave it plugged into your car overnight. Now, this is the same as those other two tubes, right? Right. Hydrogen and oxygen. Or right. Whichever one is. And the oxygen we have no use for, so we just vent off into the air. And the hydrogen. It's very nice of you. I'm sure the Earth would be proud. Well, it could use all <laughs> the oxygen it can get. So right. the uh, hydrogen right. using uh, the water pressure is compressed right. into the hydride tanks. The water pressure, like a syringe, it pushes it right into the tank. Exactly. Well, there's the standard gasoline fill, but also there's a hydrogen in it, which you just click on, leave it on overnight, and as the generator makes hydrogen, it compresses it in there at a nice slow rate, and the tanks become full oh, for a period of about eight hours or so. Why can't everybody do this? I mean, gas is you know, going at five dollars a gallon. Right. The whole country's falling apart. We're you know killing people all over the world for oil, and and this you're driving a car on this, right. and you can do it, and you can convert any other car. Yeah, unless I'm sure there are cars that have some technical right. problems, but yeah, essentially well, any car can be converted. The whole problem to it is the material in the hydride, the hydride itself. Right one of the main components of it is classified as a weapon material and it can only be used in thermonuclear weapons and because even though it's not a dangerous right. material explosive or anything by itself right. just because it's used within those nuclear weapons right. that are obviously secret and the components thereof but um, because it's used in those it can't be used for any other civilian purposes so you can't even purchase the material. No. Which is why we had to make it. You made it? Yeah, we made it. You have a particle accelerator? Yeah, so all you have to do is build a particle accelerator and you can make all the hydride you need. The biggest thing that stands in the way right now is just getting that material inside the tank, that hydride material. Right. And, yeah. the, and the reason you can't is because... It's a weapon material. But there's nothing dangerous about it. No, no, it's it won't used blow in up. A weapon, right? Well, beryllium's used in a weapon too. You know, right? Like, basically, this whole thing boils down to how you store the hydrogen. So we found a metal. We have a material that we can store the hydrogen in. We have a material we can safely store hydrogen in, and a sufficient quantity to replace the gas tank on a car. Wow, that's it. Yeah, if we had just a fraction of what the oil companies are, are wallowing <laughs> in right the, now. If we had the budget of one day in Iraq, this entire system would be available to everybody.